<laughs> Welcome to the round table. I'm your host, John it's, Kirby. Can you hear? What? Yeah, yeah it's on. Uh, that's Mark, Mikey, and Joe. Uh, so let's get started <laughs> with the Celtics. Uh, Avery Bradley has uh, made the all defensive second team. What do you guys think about Avery? Well, you know, I mean, I think it's a uh, testament to Danny Andrews' drafting system. You know, kudos to Avery. Uh, I think we saw him also draft Tony Allen a few years ago, who made a defensive um, team. So, yeah, he's a good defensive drafter. Yeah. I, I was uh, shocked to see that he was second all team. Uh, I thought that he could have been first team because multiple analysts have said that he is the best on ball defender in the league. So, I personally thought that he should have been on that top ballot. Yep, I'd agree with you, Joe. Uh, Kevin Garnett turns uh, 37 today. Um, big, big move. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think about Kevin Garnett's age? I mean, can he keep up the pace? Uh, I think he's 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 gone. He's he's. Mm -hmm. He's really old, you know. <laughs> I think Paul Pierce has a few years of hustle left in him, but uh, Kevin Garnett's, he's old. Yeah, I could not agree more, you know. KG, turning 37, he's getting too old for the game. Is he going to bring, like, a cane out on the court now? I don't, I don't know, but I don't think he can handle it. I have the complete opposite opinion, actually. I think that Kevin Garnett still has the intensity and the fire for the game and the hustle, uh, unlike Paul Pierce, who has just... <clears throat> absolutely dried up these last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So, um, moving on to the NBA playoffs, uh, Dwayne Wade out for now. Uh, what do you guys think about the Heat without Dwayne? I think they s still can get it done. Um, they have LeBron and Chris Bosh, two uh, all-stars. I think they can get it done. Uh, without Dwayne Wade, and they have good role players like Mario Chalmers and Norris Cole that can really pick up the pace and score points quickly. Well, let's get your finals predictions, guys. Who do you think will be the finals matchup this year? He Grizzlies. I think I have the same opinion. Same opinion. I, I'm going Pacers, Spurs. It's a bold prediction. Yeah, that's that's bold. I would like to see the Pacers. They've played great, but I don't think they can handle the Heat quite yet. They they won the season series three to one, actually. Okay. Season regulars. I'm just saying that means something. It means something. It means nothing. Pacers are a are a good team, but I think that the Heat really know how to turn it up in the in the playoffs and will eventually get the win. Yeah, Heat will win this year. They they've also rested the mm -hmm. Pacers. Still haven't won their series. They're an, they're an unstoppable force. <laughs> All right, we'll see, guys. Uh, Jason Kidd has not scored since uh, against the Celtics in Game Two. Um, since then, the Knicks have scored 773 points. The NBA has scored 9,657 points. Uh, Jets drafted Geno Smith, released Tim Tebow, or won the Kentucky Derby. Uh, a lot of stuff going on since Jason Kidd has scored. What do you think's wrong with him? I think he's getting up there in age. That's, yep. You know, same thing with Kevin Garnett. Uh, I think you're starting to see these stars that were there 10 years ago that own the league. They're uh, really falling off. I think it has to do with uh, his great ability to penetrate and pass. Um, he does get great minutes, 15, 16 a game. He just knows how to uh, find his teammates who, who uh, when you have Carmelo and J.R. Smith on your team, you don't really need to take a lot of shots. I mean, if you can find, if you can penetrate and get open shots for them, then you won't have a problem. Very true. Uh the Heat won their series against the Bulls for uh, four to one. What did you guys think about that series? I thought it was expected. Yeah, very expected. Yep. Uh, I mean, after that first game where the Bulls just blew out, blew out the Heat, I, I didn't know what was gonna happen, but 
I can't say I'm too surprised. I mean, the, the Bulls were injury-ridden, and it definitely yeah. showed as the series went on. I mean, they didn't have Derrick Rose. They had even players who were actually playing were injured, like Joe Kim Noah. Just really big players that needed to come through were injured, so that eventually led to the downfall of the Bulls. Speaking of Derrick Rose, I mean, at this point, what's going on with uh, former MVP Derrick Rose? I mean, when's he going to come back? Next year. I mean. Yeah, he'll be back. But will he be back? Is the I question. mean, yes. will he he'll be, be back. He'll be back. He'll, he'll be, be back, but will he be back? Yeah, he'll be back. All right. <laughs> I think it's just a... Uh, it's a mental thing at this point. I mean, doctors have said that he can play. He just, he's taking his time, especially because he's their franchise player. They want him to be absolutely 100% and think that he's 100% Yeah, I mean, we've seen back. it before, you know. Guys come back too early and then their whole career is destroyed. Mm -hmm. Just look at Sean yeah. Livingston. Uh, especially for a point guard that relies on his explosiveness like you see with Derrick Rose. Yeah. Uh, Big surprise, the Thunder uh, were eliminated by the Grizzlies 4-1. Uh, what do you think happened other than Westbrook being injured? I think it was definitely um, the Memphis Grizzlies big men, and that's why I think I could see them dark horsing their way to a championship. Um, you know, they their interior power, you know, Marcus Gasol and Zach Randolph really stepped it up. Marcus Gasol, Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, and uh, just Sergi Ibaka and Kendrick Perkins couldn't handle it. Yeah, I think both Marcus Gasol and Zach Randolph combined for around 39 and 19. Yeah, uh, just awesome. Just terrific team defense kept them together against an explosive Kevin Durant and a uh, strong center spot as uh, mm -hmm. Sergi Ibaka and. Kendrick Perkins. And I just think the Grizzlies wanted it more, you know? The team that wants it more will, will come out with the W. Especially in the playoffs. Yeah. Yep. Uh, moving on to the Red Sox. Uh, Napoli made a big-time error the other day. Mm. Disappointing. Uh, what did you think about that loss? I thought it was a flaw. Yeah. yeah. He's a really good player. He'll bounce back. Yep. Uh, Lackey is lacking uh, uh, ability. Not ability. Ability. Uh, also um, hard. Pretty good player. I mean, right now I think he's just in a slump. For like the last three years. A lifelong slump? Yeah. You know? I mean, he was injured. Yeah. It's, <laughs> so. it's really terrible to see, considering he's making 15 well, and a quarter million dollars a yeah. year, and he just he's bad. Yeah, definitely overpaid. He's just not good. He's just way overpaid for a guy that mm -hmm. we didn't even know exactly what we were getting for. And apparently it's just bad. Bad. Just bottom of the pitching rotation, grinding it out just to get a W. It's it's hard to see. Well, on the upside, Bob Colts and Lester still going strong. What do you think about those two guys? They're good. Yeah. Good guys. I think they they've definitely... Uh, <coughs> help the rotation. Um, they've, we've got some young pitchers in the rotation at this point. Felix Dubrant, uh, Alan Webster, uh, who comes up and down from Pawtucket. Um, I think just having those veterans there really helps the Red Sox, and especially with a great year, we can definitely see ourselves in the playoffs. Okay. Um, moving on to the NFL. Uh, Aaron Hernandez and Logan Mankins in the top 100. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't think it's a huge deal because the players vote on it and it's just mm -hmm. a nice accolade, but it's definitely nice to see them getting uh, represented. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Brandon Diedrich Cut uh, as Pats like some, some interior pass rushing. Um, to help Jones and Ninkovich and take advantage of Will Forks drawing doubles. Uh, Agreed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, with the new additions, uh, 
of Tommy Kelly and Big Wolf Fork. Look for love to improve. Right, guys? <laughs> yeah, he's... Yeah, Kyle Love got cut. Um, <laughs> he, he was, uh, he got diabetes. And <laughs> so then, uh, he, he had a lot of weight loss, and then he uh, couldn't be kept. But he also didn't provide that <laughs> interior pass rush that uh, Armand Armstead from the CFL is looking to provide. He's a youngster, only 22 years old. And he played really well for his team. Um, he was an all-star in the CFL. And so it's basically, he was going to be a second or third round pick before he actually had a heart attack at USC, So, um, which was not his fault. It was one of the doctors gave him a uh, really bad drug that gave him a heart attack. So. Uh, uh, he's been medically cleared to play. He played in the CFL and was fine, and now it's like a second or third round draft pick that they got in the uh, undrafted free agent class. It's a great pick. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, and Tommy Kelly nice. played really well for the Raiders over the last few years. Yep. Uh, moving on to the Preakness, the second leg of the Triple Crown. Um, big question could Orb win the Triple Crown? I think he's got a chance. Orb is a great runner. He really knows how to turn, and I think he's got a chance to cross the finish line in first. I, uh, I, I think Orb has a chance, but I think that it's a shorter race, and he doesn't have the kind of speed to uh, to win it. Yeah. Um, I think that we could definitely definitely see Golden Sense uh, rebound from his 17th place at the Kentucky Derby as the seven to one uh, runner up. Um, so definitely watch out for Golden Sense. Yep. Um, I, I completely agree with you, Joe. I don't think Orb has nearly enough speed to keep up with Golden Sense. And Orb also drew a very tough post position, drawing the one position. And he likes to do his running from the outside. So, I mean, it's going to take a lot. Um, for Orb to win. Um, and, I mean, he also doesn't have the advantage of the muddy track that he did last time. Obviously, he excelled on that. Um, Rosie Napravnik rode in the Derby, did not win that. Uh, could she be the first female to female jockey to win the Preakness? I don't think she's got a chance. No. I agree with you. Um, she's... I mean, she's obviously a very talented jockey, but um, maybe maybe in a year or so, or whenever the next race is, but not 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 this race, not today. Uh, D. Wayne Lucas, a trainer with uh, three horses in the race, a third of the field, obviously gives him a better chance, kind of like Todd Pletcher with five out of the 20 in the Derby. What do you guys think about Dwayne Lucas? It's cheating. Yeah. It's cheating. Definitely. It should, be, it should be against the rules, you know. You can't have three horses. It's, it's like if obviously you faster. Horse, obviously you're gonna win the whole thing. It's like. Well, right, I mean, congrats. He has three horses that are good enough to be in the Preakness. Get, give him, give him credit. Yeah, give him good. credit. Can you ride all of them at the same time? He's like, a trainer, Mikey. Not, not a jockey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know, but can he ride them? At <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gary Stevens and Mike Smith, both old riders. Uh, either one of them could be the first one. Uh, not the first one. Oldest jockey to win the Preakness. I think they're past. No. They're prime. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. So. Gary Stevens coming from a. I mean, comeback. they're old. They're old. Yeah. But you don't need like a lot of. Athletic ability. Oh, oh yes, you, you are do. so oh, wrong. Yes, you okay. Okay. You're okay. so okay. wrong. Yeah. You know, jockeying yeah. is one of the most physically tasking sports out there. I think it is um, a lot of people man. underestimate it. It's that quick speed concentration and, that I mean, is split and unmatched and in other sports. Endurance yeah. and just... Split second decisions. You know, it's, it's right, one of the most tasking. It's definitely one of the most that, tasking sports But it's like there. mostly mental... So, no, no, except no, for no, the no, physical no. aspect, yes. I mean, these <laughs> jockeys have to maintain their weight like to 110 pounds. And this it's is very difficult to very do difficult. at 50 years and old. And they have okay. to stay within this physical ability range. You know, it's 
physical condition. While it is it's extremely mentally um, demanding, you know, the physical is where it really comes in. Yeah. And emotional, the connection right. between you and your horse. You know? That does play a role. They, they've been around for a long time. They're veterans. They know how to win races, so I think that they yeah, still I mean, have a chance. I mean, their physical ability has obviously decreased, but I think their mental ability has only increased mm -hmm. with experience. Very but. true. All right, moving on to the Bruins. Uh, they beat the Maple Leafs in Game 7 in a stupendous comeback. What do you guys think about the Bruins? A nail-biter for sure. I was yeah. crazy. When I saw that it got to a 4-1, to one, I was kind of had to switch the channel because I didn't think that... Mm -hmm. With with 16 minutes left, it's, it's unheard of. It, it's unheard of. So when I saw they scored again 4-2... I was like, okay, maybe they have a chance. There's like 10, uh, 15 minutes left. But then I got to 4-3, I instantly went back because it was just turned into a great game instantly. Like Exhilarating. Ju like Justin sure. Bieber says, never say never. never say Very never. true. Yep. yep. That is what he says. Um, so, uh, I mean, Bergeron yeah. in the overtime great winner. Game. What, do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, he's played well. Um, and more importantly... In the next series, they played really well last night yeah. against the Rangers. Yeah, Overtime looking win, forward. 3-2. Uh, yeah, good game. Good game. Yeah. Marshawn finally got that goal in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, so, Char played over 30 minutes in Game 7 at home. Uh, do you think it affected him last night? He's, he's in great condition. He... He's a key player for the Bruins, and I think that he knows that he has to be out there for 25-plus uh, minutes each night, and I think that he's up for the challenge. All right. Uh, Crosby is back playing, ready for the playoffs. Um, what do you think about him? How do you good player. Yeah. Very good player. I mean, having him back is huge for the Penguins. I mean, he's an assist and goal machine. I think that just bringing him back uh, is definitely going to propel the Penguins past the Ottawa Senators and eventually, hopefully, see them see the Bruins in the Eastern Conference Championship. What do you think about Ovechkin's quote, nobody remembers losers, everybody remembers winners? Very good quote, very true. I don't even... I don't, I don't remember even. a single loser, ever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either. Same with me. Yeah. yeah I only remember winners. winners. Joe. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I agree with all you guys. Good. Yeah. That's what it should be. Uh, conference finals. <laughs> defending the Stanley Cup. Uh, the LA Kings lead 1-0 over the San Jose Sharks. You think the Kings? Could possibly. I think neither of them have a chance. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, the Kings will win the series. Uh, they won last night, Double making it a two nothing series advantage, and I think that they just have a lot of momentum. And yeah, they got a good goalie, good keeper. Mm -hmm. quick. Very good. Keepers. Yeah. Very good. In the Thirty-five night. saves. Very impressive. He's good. Uh, the Boston Marathon has invited. The runners to return for the 2013 marathon. 14. 2014. 14. Next year. I know, but it says here. Yeah. But uh, anyway, what do you guys think about the marathon doing this? It's I important. Think. You know, I think it's, it's great. You know, Boston is strong. Very good gesture. Great steps towards you know commemorating those who ran this year. Speaking of Boston strong, uh. That Toronto fan with the Toronto oh Stronger my. sign. I mean, what a jerk. Gutsy moves to say the least. Um, yeah. I think it really shows that they uh, lost the series. Yeah. yeah. Probably his fault, actually. <laughs> I doubt it, but. I mean, I karma, you know? Yeah, karma. 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 Comes back to bite you. Very yeah. immature. Um, but so that's, that's how. This uh, rivalry is, you know, I mean, these yeah. teams really went at it. And, I think uh, that may I have mean, fueled the Bruins. Definitely. And in a sense. Pouring fuel on That's the fire. Social media. You know, this is, this is the, 
the case where sometimes something outside of the game has come into the game and kind of helped the Bruins. Bulletin board material. Completely, yes. You see it all the time. And uh, usually it's quotes. This time it's a t-shirt and uh, always always fires up the trip. It was a, a sign. Board, but yeah. Sign, exactly. Yeah, that's Me, what you I meant, bet right? it's a t-shirt yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, be safe, everybody, at prom. Uh, mm -hmm. Have a good time. Stay classy. This is, yeah. Uh, Thanks for joining us. See you yeah. next week. See you next week, guys. Autobots roll out.